We are live. Welcome back to another edition of the Earl Sports Bet Show. My name is Nicholas Charlotte. I'm here as, as always by my brother Tim. What up, cappers, gamblers, punters, hustlers, low baggers? Happy Friday, March 17th to all of you. Thank you for watching Betting with the Bag right here on Pub Sports Radio. Hello, I'm Dave. Back again with another free pick video. Sports betting, an ever-growing market getting bigger by the day. With 36 states already having legalized sports betting and more expected in the coming years. With more and more people betting on sports every day, there are more than 40 available legal sports book options, as well as plenty of offshore books for the non-legal states. Looking at you, North Carolina. With the growth of the industry, lots of people now create content on social media. Hundreds of channels on YouTube and thousands of Twitter accounts post about sports betting, including lots of live streams. Oh, he skates from the bottom, and he scores! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, Thank you! <laughs> there we go! We didn't get it in the There we go! We get it in the shootout! I was a stand-up comedian for 17 years and an uh, actor, and I did a documentary, a mockumentary uh, on a gambler uh, that was, you know, based on myself. And no one really cared much about the mockumentary, uh, but to legitimize the character, I just started putting my action out every day, and I put my action out every day for, not for very long, for a couple oh. months, and. I started getting people uh, messaging me and about what I was doing and, and Sportsbook Review asked if, if I wanted my action on their channel every Friday and I was excited about it. I started uh, on their channel every Friday and uh, and I would get more hate uh, than positivity, a lot of negativity, a lot of uh, and they loved it. You know, I guess negativity and hate and just not the normal thing kind of works and then they asked me to come down and, and host a conference for them. And I said, I would host the conference for you for free if I could do the morning capping show with Peter Loshak. And they were, they were like, of course, we don't care. you know. So I started doing the week, the morning show with him. And one thing led to another. They offered me a job in Costa Rica. And I took it. And we moved the family down to Costa Rica. And uh, that was about six years ago. Yeah, definitely. I, I spend time in Arizona and California. In Arizona, I'll start with California. California is not legal um, if you're going to sports bet, which is funny because they've got a lot of indie casinos and card rooms, but as far as sports book and race books and horse racing, but they don't have legal sports books. So you're really limited to using offshore accounts. And, and, and while that sounds shady, there are reputable ones and ones that aren't, but you're always worried they're not regulated by the FDIC. Uh, ultimately, if you get screwed, um, you're not getting your money. I haven't had that circumstance happen. I know others that have on smaller books, but you just have to be more careful. You also have less options. Uh, one of the things we talk about as, as sports bettors and handicappers is shopping lines. It's like uh, going to different stores that have different prices for products. Same thing with bets. In Arizona, I'm, I'm pretty much wide open. There's really only one book I can't use, but I have all the legal sports books. I have all the lines. It's it's pretty much everything I want. In fact, I live on the Arizona, Nevada, California border, and I have brick and mortar sports books that are 25, 30 minutes away from me. I don't even need to go to them because I live in Arizona and have I have uh, the ability to get their action online. So it's it's definitely much easier in a state where it's legal, obviously, but it also makes no sense in California, a state that has a lot of casinos and card rooms that just had a proposition try to pass and that got knocked down. It's, it's a shame, especially too in a state that has financial problems all the time. So, some of my strategies for betting uh, for co betting college basketball. Yeah, um, the thing is, I don't know any of the players, and it does not matter to me. Everything in college basketball is a number. There's a statistic behind it. There's a ranking behind it, and when it comes to it, everything is about numbers. I don't care about who, what players are playing that night, because most of the time in college basketball, 
they're, they're going to play. Um, and you look at it, you try to find the weird lines that go with it. If you find an unranked team that's favorited against a ranked team, that's a go-to for me is just being able to find the weird lines. Whenever you can get a ranked team at plus money, yeah, I go the opposite way. It's just being able to find the lines that don't look right. If I see a team that's 8 and 20 that's favorited against a team that's 17 and 10, yeah, I'm grabbing the team that's 8 and 20. Um, it's just being able to find which lines look weird, which lines, what the books are trying to tell you uh, in terms of where they are, because a lot of the game will be able to be told by what the line is. So being able to find those weird lines, those ranked teams that are dogs against unranked teams and fading that, those are the plays that you want to look for. I know a lot of handicappers that don't care about the market, and it's shocking. There is nothing more important in handicapping a game than the market. Your X's and O's come second. You need to know where the money is, where are the big bets, and where is the line moving. I didn't realize that when I started doing this. That's why I was losing publicly. There's a reason why we're all in this industry or sitting in the chair or making the bets. It's because we have won in our past. When I look at my past, it's because I won you know, big futures bets. Futures is a little different. It's more of a gut feel. You know a certain team really well. You study them in the offseason, and you think they have a lot of value. But game to game, you know that the public is going to lose. If you are on the side of the public, you are going to lose more than you are going to win. And one of the problems is when we do this for a living, we see the public play before the public. I started really succeeding in sports gambling when I let go of closing line value. When I started realizing, oh, I'm just seeing a public play before the public. That's why I'm beating this line move by 40 cents, but I'm on the public side and I'm going to lose with the public. There's certain things you need to understand and then you start succeeding in sports gambling. When you read the line, you want to know that the bigger bets are coming on your side and the books are showing some fear and moving the line in that direction. If that combines with your X's and O's, then you make the bet. If it doesn't, you got to let it go. That you are a good capper. Uh, you're not. You're not as good as the supercomputers. The The better you think you are at handicapping, the more money you're going to lose in your career. Until you have a fear of the supercomputers and the MIT students that are taking over the industry, then you can start building up. If you think you're just a great handicapper, you are going to lose. Some sports are harder than others. If you think you're a great baseball capper, you're going to get destroyed. You have to have a healthy fear. You have to understand the marketplace. You have to know what you're getting yourself into. And I started my first year doing it publicly. I had a great NHL season. You know, I got up 43 units in NHL. NHL is probably the most simple sport to bet. I went into the baseball season so excited to show everybody how good of a baseball capper I was. And I got you know, publicly destroyed because I was ignorant to how important the market is. You're not a good handicapper. The supercomputers are. What you have to understand is how can I beat the books? When I came on Twitter, I was anti-social media. One of the reasons I stayed on was viewing what I liked and what I didn't like about other uh, sports gambling, Twitter, and other handicappers. One of them is transparency. And it, it's not even just transparency like you know, putting your bet up and saying I won or I lost, but really having a way of showing your whole record. So I post it, and there's different ways of doing it. There are apps um, that I know some people use. Um, I, I actually manually do it. 
and back up what I have on my Twitter feed, which is time stamped into a spreadsheet. But the bottom line is you need to be transparent because all that matters at the end of the day is your record. Some people even say your record doesn't matter. If they're not posting their record in some very specific long-term way, question why they're, uh, you know, question why they're not doing it and if you should be following them. But as far as consistency, it's just like anything else. If you want to be good at something, you have to do it all the time. You're only going to get out of it what you put in. And um, if, if you're taking sports gambling advice from someone that's not doing it every day, A, you know that you have other options, but B, you know they don't love it enough. And, and really, you should love it and do it every day and be consistent. And I think I've missed, I missed two days in a year and a half since I've been on Twitter. One was there was nothing to bet that day. It was WNBA, which I don't bet. And the other one, I have another excuse, but I try to do it every single day. Study the market. You have to study the market. It doesn't matter how much better you are than your friends. It doesn't matter how many pools that you win. Or, you know, it doesn't matter about any of that. The best gamblers know how to read the marketplace. And you have to track your action. You need a spreadsheet. You have to track your action. And you have to look at your success and your failures every day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give two. The one thing that I did was keep it simple. Pick one sport, and preferably a sport that you like. That you, I mean, obviously it should be a sport that you like. And come up with whatever system you want. Uh, when I mean systems, there's all sorts of ways to bet a game. Whether you're betting spreads or money lines or totals or only betting a certain conference or division, keep it simple from the start and, and get running. But to tie that in with it, something that wasn't happening as much when I started capping is go watch YouTube. Go go watch some of these shows. Go into it with the mindset that you're not going to necessarily believe. It's like the news. You don't, you don't, or, or uh, it's like political news. You don't want to go into it knowing you want to believe a side or not. You want to go in and see how it's done so you can learn the lingo and learn all sides. Watch multiple shows. There's so much information out there. And, and learn that way. Learn the, te uh, the terminology, the different betting styles. And then and then find one. Let's say it's baseball that you pick. Find a, base, find a baseball capping channel that you like and, and use that for a, for a frame of reference, which, again, wasn't something that I had. I wish I did when I started.